Well guys, welcome back to Motor in PSUs and today we have an overclocking guide for the i7 7700K which is actually going to work for the i7 6700K and it's actually going to be very similar for the 8700K as well. And now you might be wondering why are you covering those CPUs? from LGA1151 in 2024 and the truth is, especially if overclocked, they're still very, very much relevant for gaming. Obviously not really for productivity unless you're just using Photoshop because they just have four cores, eight threads, but for gaming, if overclocked, they can still handle fine a GTX 1080 Ti, which is still very good, or an RTX 3060, even though it is PCIe Gen 4, you're not going to see any kind of uh, degradation there. And even an RTX 4060 is a very good pairing with the CPU and today they are very cheap. So that's why I'm covering it. Also, a little disclaimer, these CPUs run with very high temperatures. So the issue with today's video is most of you will be temperature constrained. So I'm going to tell you how to avoid that. But on average, you're probably going to be needing to delete your CPU. And I have a tutorial on the channel. It is actually not scary, especially not on a cheap CPU like this. The lead and liquid metal are going to be your friends if you really want to push the CPU. You also want good RAM if you can, because they benefit from RAM quite a bit. But with that said, I say we get in the BIOS and we start tuning. Now a little specs, I'm using the Asus ROG Maximus uh, motherboard, but this is going to be working for every motherboard, but the names will be a bit different in motherboards which are not from Asus, but it's very simple. So I'm sure you guys can follow either way. And you can always cross reference with the other tutorials I have on the channel, which have different motherboards. So sorry for the long intro. Remember to like and subscribe if in the end it helps you and let's get going. Now, just quickly showing you, we have basically the ROG motherboard, we have a full custom loop and we have some Dominator RAM. So this is basically the best case scenario for this CPU. Also the CPU is deleted with liquid metal but this is going to work even with a cheap air cooler. So let's get going. Here we are in the BIOS. Now you want to go in the advanced mode and then in the overclocking tuner or AI tweaker or extreme tweaker, basically where you have all your overclocking options. Now, first thing, be sure you have your XMP enabled. Now this is not a CPU thing, but you should just have it enabled. And then the multi-core enhancements, you can leave it on auto if you have it, but really we're going to be doing some manual tuning, so it doesn't really matter, okay? Let's go down. You want to find something that's called the CPU core ratio and now here we want to put our speed. So this is how fast the CPU is going to go. We are aiming for 5 gigahertz, but uh, if your CPU is not deleted, trust me, aim for 4.8 or at best 4.9. If you're deleted, 5 gigahertz is going to be easy, okay? After this, we want to go all the way down, okay? And we want to go into external DG Plus power control, or it's going to be called differently depending on the bias, but you want to find something that's called CPU load line calibration. And now this one, you want to put a middle value. It explains it here. For every motherboard, the level is different, but if you put it right in the middle, you're not going to be mistaken. So put level free, no matter what motherboard you have, just put level free. You're going to be fine. Now CPU current capability, 140%. Then hear me out on this one. Okay. So CPU power phase control. Now, this one is going to basically determine how the VRMs, which is the motherboard voltage regulators, are going to be working for your CPU. So if you're going for a relatively conservative overclock, leave this on auto. But if you're going hard, like over 5 gigahertz, put this on extreme. It's going to be much better. Now, DRAM current capability, 130, but it's not really going to matter. And then here is basically all we need. Now, at this point, you want to find something that's called the CPU core current limit max and you want to just max this out because it's just how much it can push it doesn't really matter okay now the cache we're going to be talking about this one a bit later on okay let's first focus on the cpu core and cache ratio okay so you want to put this to manual we're doing just a fully manual voltage and so whatever you put here is going to be adjusted via the load line calibration and then outputted directly into your cpu for 5 gigahertz if you're really lucky you're going to be needing 1.3 but you have to be really lucky like the luckiest person watching this video 1.3 is going to work for most of you 1.35 is going to work for 5 gigahertz if you have a slightly unlucky chip or a little bit of a chip that has worn out over the years 1.375 is going to work. And then if you're really unlucky, the unluckiest person watching this video, 1.4 is going to be where you're at. But as you can see, it started to get colored in yellow. And that's because it will degrade your CPU from 1.4 and upwards quite a bit quicker. If you want to push 5.2 gigahertz, you can go all the way up to 1.45 as long as your CPU is deleted and you have your temperatures in check. Okay. If you're really crazy and you don't really care about your CPU, 1.475 is doable. 
do not go higher than 1.475, okay? Please, 1.475, uh, you can probably push all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz if you have a very good CPU and if you have very good cooling, but you need extreme phase on the VRMs as we showed before, and you need like some kind of airflow over your VRMs on your motherboards because it's gonna be getting quite a bit of heat, trust me. But let's now talk about normal people. So you wanna start again from 1.3, and this is going to be a good voltage, but if you're having temperature issues, you can go all the way down to 1.25, maybe with a nice 48 here. So this is like if you have an all-in-one, uh, but you have maybe a small case, this is going to be very good for you. So keep this in mind, it's going to probably work. But now let me spend a few words on validation because we have basically finished. I just have a few words about cache, but we will keep those for the end. But first, it's nice to be talking about validation. So these settings, you should just copy them, but then you have to try them out. So you need to go into Windows, run a good stress test, maybe some games. Prime 95 is a very good stress test, just to run it. Keep your temperatures in check. You really do not want your temperatures to, to reach 90 degrees. In the 80s, it's a bit high, but it's fine. All the way until 90 is fine. Do not go higher than 90. And uh, that's basically it really. But be sure to validate these settings because even though you hit F10 and you boot, doesn't mean it's stable. So you want to check them properly. Okay. Now, cache ratio. For a sad voltage point, a voltage point associates a core clock point to a voltage, you will need more voltage to get a higher cache. That seems simple, but it's actually a bit tricky. So for example, let's say I want to get my cache to 45. Okay. You always want to have these two uh, the same, basically. Instead of 1.25, I'm going to be needing at least 1.3 with all the temperature issues that follow. But getting your cache higher in some games is actually more important than getting your core clock higher. So running like this, so 1.3 volt, 45 on cache, and 48 in here, in some games might be faster than running with 50 in here and no cache overclock. So you definitely want to test out your cache as well and find the sweet spot for you, okay? Spend some time in it. You will definitely be rewarded for doing so. And really, overclocking on this platform is relatively simple. We have covered everything there is to do. You don't need any more settings. Everything else you see is useless. So if it was helpful, please drop a like and a sub. And uh, hopefully I will catch you guys in another video. I do builds. I have many tutorials. Uh, also, again, the leading liquid metal copper IHS for your CPU. So maybe check out the channel. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Goodbye.